Okay, so what if we want to remove a node from the list? So we're gonna look at an algorithm for removing a node, which is going to delete a node, which is effectively going to remove a value from our list. So what do we need to have in scope? What do we need to have access to? We need to have access to the head reference and we have to have a target value that we're searching for. Now, this is going to be a little bit more complicated because we're gonna have to update some links. We're gonna have to have some traversal with multiple references to support that. And we're gonna have to you know, make sure that the node leaves memory. So what are we gonna do? Let's draw up our two scenarios, empty list. And then we'll have a non-empty list where the value is both found and not found. Let's say that we'll be searching for X in one case, Y in another. So first thing is first, we are going to set up a temporary reference called P and we're going to set that to our head reference. And then we're going to have a secondary reference, temporary reference, which we will initialize to null. So when we do that, that's gonna have us have a picture that looks like this, P and Q. So let us say that we're doing a remove operation and we want to remove, say, X, whatever that value might be. Okay, so if we're gonna do that, then we have to check each node. So it's kind of like a combination of the find algorithm, a modified find algorithm. So we have to check each node for what we're looking for. Now, if we're looking for X, we're gonna start here. We're gonna look at first node and is X in there? No. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to update our Q to point to that first node and then we're gonna advance P, okay? So, so long as our P reference does not equal null, and we have to check that first, that texts us from accidentally trying to access an invalid memory location. If you do this in the other order, it could be the case that we get this out of the order that you're trying to access a node that doesn't exist. So you have to make sure that you're checking the contents of your P first, okay? And the node we're examining, it's X, so long as it does not equal our target. So long as that is the case, then we're gonna advance our Q first, and then we're gonna advance our P. So after checking the first node, we have this picture here. Is P not null? True. And is the X integer not the same as what we're looking for? That's true because we're looking for integer X here. So then we'll update Q to point to what P is pointing at. And then we'll update our P to P next. Okay. Now go back to the top. Is P not null? True. And is P dot X not equal to our target? Well, that's false. Right, so we're done with the loop. So we've got both our P and our Q pointing at the right place. Our P and our Q are pointing where we need them to point because this is gonna be a two-step operation to remove the node that contains our X integer. First thing we have to do is we have to update this next right here. We have to update Q next, and then we have to remove that node that P is pointing at. So we've got to remove the P node. And depending on the language we're working with, there's a couple different ways we have to go about this. So by updating Q next, what we're doing is we're bypassing that node that P is referring to. So we would do something like Q next is set to P next, right? So then we have bypassed the node P and then we would have to remove that first node, right? We'd have to remove that node that P is referring to. So how can we do that? If we're talking about Java or Python, then it's as easy as doing something like this, P set to null, because that'll break this reference to that target node, and then the garbage collector will come along and get rid of it. Now, if we're talking about C or C++, then we have to use free or C, or in the case of C++, we have to do delete P, okay? So more on that in a second. That's one scenario. We'll flesh out our algorithm here in a second, but we have to consider a couple of other scenarios too before we can do our finish our algorithm here. So let us say that we were looking for Y. Go to the top of our algorithm there and Q gets set to null, P gets set to the first node. So what happens in this scenario? Well, well, P not null, that's true. And P dot X not equal to T. Well, in that case, since we're looking for Y, that's gonna be false. So the P and the Q never move. So in that scenario, we have to not update Q next because there is no Q next. Q's pointing to null, it's not pointing to a node. So we're not gonna do that. We're still gonna remove that P node, 
But instead, what we need to have happen, since that first node is going to go away, we need to update our head reference to point there. So we're going to do head set to head.next. And then from there, we can remove that P node. So again, it's going to be one of these two scenarios, right? Set the P to null, in which case you break the link to that node. There's no longer anything pointing to that node. So the garbage collector takes care of it. C++, you delete it, in which case it leaves memory and you're good to go. Or you use free in C, right? So that's the other scenario we have to deal with. We have to incorporate into our algorithm. Now, the last one we're going to deal with is what happens if what you're searching for isn't in the list at all. So you would end up with a picture that looks like this, okay? So... That would mean that you went all the way through all the iterations of this loop and you get to the point where p not null is false. So there's nothing to delete, right? So in that case, we don't want to do anything. Now, the only time we actually want to do anything is if p actually is not null. So in other words, if p is pointing to a node that we can actually delete. So that's the only time we want to do anything. So we will test for that. We will say if p does not equal null, then that means that we're going to delete some stuff. That means p is pointing here, or it's pointing here, or it's pointing here, or it's pointing here. Now, there's two possibilities if p is pointing at a node. It's either pointing at the head node or it's not. And depending on if it's pointing at the head node or not, is going to determine whether or not we need q. So let us say that P is pointing at the head node. That means that we have to delete that one. That means that Q is pointing at nothing. So we can test for Q. We'll say, well, if Q, if our Q is null, in that scenario, he must be pointing at the first node. So we will go ahead and advance our head pointer, our head reference. And then we're going to free up that node. We're going to delete that node. We're going to remove that node. We'll call it collectively remove the node. Now remember when we talked about removing that node, there was a couple of different scenarios, right? Depends on what language you're using. I'll just say delete here. We're gonna delete that node. Depends on the language you're using, how you go about doing that, okay? So what if Q is not null? If Q is not null, then that means that we've got a picture that looks more like this. Maybe we have something like this. P is pointing at this guy and Q is referring to this guy. Right? So we still want to remove this node right here that P is referring to. But first, now it's an if else here because it's one or the other. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to set Q to P next. Right? So we're going to take this link right here and we're going to override it with what's in the P nodes next. So that way it now has the memory address of the node following the node that we want to get rid of. And then once that's done, we can remove this. We can delete that node and we're not going to break our list. Okay, very last thing we want to test here is we want to test what happens if P is pointing at the last node. Now we already know that if P is pointing at null down here, we're not doing anything because the only time we're determining if we're going to remove anything is if P is null, right? If P is not null, we're not doing anything. But in this case, we want to check to make sure that since we're removing this last node, that the node before it becomes our new last node. So is P not null true is q null false so we kick down to the else and then we do q set to p next and then we can remove our p does that preserve our list yes because we can traverse from the head pointer from the head node to the next node to the next node all the way to null okay now if this was going to be java then what would that delete statement look like or if it was going to be python what would it look like we simply overwrite the contents of p with null because that breaks the link to the node and then the garbage collector comes along and frees up that node. If it was C++, then we would have a delete keyword and then P. Okay, and if it was C, we'd do something like free P, right? Okay, so that is your remove algorithm. Now, what's the performance? You can probably kind of guess, right? The while loop here is going to overwhelm all of the other operations, right? Because this operation only happens once. This only happens once. This is going to happen once. And then either this happens or this happens, either this happens or this happens and this happens, right? So, but these are all fixed in the number of times that they occur. Doesn't matter how many nodes you have in the list, these only happen 
the one time. The P and the Q get set before the loops happens. We have our test that happens, and then we have another test here, and then either this or this happens, and then that. So that is a total of what two operations, three operations, four, then one of these is five, and then six. So that's plus eight, right? Eight total operations on top of what we do with our while loop. But our while loop is gonna occur in times. So that in times is gonna happen because we're gonna have in nodes. And so in the worst case, you've got an operation here, you've got an operation here, you've got an operation here, you've got an operation here. So it's actually, to be completely accurate, it's big O four of N plus eight. But thanks to calculus and approaching infinity, the larger the N gets, the bigger this term gets. So we can not care about that anymore. And Four times a huge number is still a huge number. Four times infinity is still infinity. So we can drop the four there. That's kind of how that works. And so overall, this is going to become big O of N. So that's performance of our remove algorithm.